live generously, give generously, and just see how God blesses that. All we're doing is following Jesus. We're doing as Jesus would have us do. It has brought a unity of purpose to us and for us, and I just think that's wonderful. If this church can find its mission, God will provide. And that just kind of hit me like lightning. And in the back of my mind, I was hoping maybe this could be our mission. You know, maybe this could be our mission. I can tell you this, our congregation, it is small, but we are one for the first time. I've been in this church 50 years. It's the first time that we really, really, really feel connected. I hope they feel like we see them as the way God sees them as an individual with a, a, a lifetime of experiences that we cannot possibly comprehend because we haven't been in their shoes, you know. Uh, I, I hope they feel like we welcome them as, as somebody worthy. And I, I mean, that's, uh, that's the goal. And this place is such a blessing because they take time to pray with people and to minister to their emotional needs, not just the physical needs. And that's what I appreciate. I appreciate what the, the material things they give me, but I appreciate the spiritual help that I get from them praying with me. Our men who work directly with this, they see a blessing and they receive a blessing, and we do too. We do. It's a way of reaching out to the community. It's a way of meeting a need that they have. At some point, they may come to our church and they may not. That's, that's not the point. The point is there's a need and we need to help to, sh to share what we have with them. Well, about eight, nine years ago, we started a food, small food pantry. I built some shelves downstairs. We stocked it with some canned goods. The Methodist Men's Group helped with that, as well as other people as well. And then with Anthony's help, we'll fill the boxes with various items that we think those particular families will need. And then I'll help him load his vehicle and take him to those places. Not long after I was coming here with the youth and stuff, and I got involved with the food pantry then because I seen people that would come around and in our youth group, they would say that, you know, when are we going to eat? And some of the, the kids and stuff was hungry. I said, God, I'm just leaving this food pantry now in your hands. We don't want you willing us to do. I started seeing the hungry people after that come to our food pantry. And then when COVID closed the church, we uh, started with the uh, food being delivered outside to them. The boxes were either placed on the ground in the parking lot or else they were placed on the tables in the the picnic tables in the pavilion. And uh, when people came to pick them up, many times they would say, well, I, I have a prayer need. Would you pray with us about this? And we formed a large circle in the parking lot. And uh, we prayed together for those special prayer needs. And on one particular night, there was a young man with us and he made a profession of faith as that group met. So we did the baptism and that was primarily, I guess, the result of our, our food distribution because he wouldn't have been here if, if, he hadn't, if it hadn't been for that. We're doing meaningful work together. We are reach, we're meeting the needs of the people, not only in our county, but the counties around. There is true Christian love being shared and um, that's what everybody's need is. We just don't know it sometimes. You, the younger people are sort of harder to reach to, and me being in my, with my peers and able to share that, just knowing that I'm the, the person God's using for them is a joy. We are a connected church, and we need to work with other people out there. And we need to work with the community as well. And that's what we try to do here.